Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And I'm at my door. And I want to show you some more things about what you can discover right outside your door. This is the third episode in a series I'm doing on monarch butterflies. And the first episode was on finding and identifying milkweed and some of its really interesting history. The second episode was on how to find monarch eggs or monarch caterpillars on that milkweed. And today's episode is about, okay, you took a caterpillar home. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to take care of it? What are some different ways to do it? So this e episode, we'll talk about how to take care of a monarch caterpillar that you brought home, where to keep it, some of the things you need to know, some things that might happen during the process and some things that, that you'll see. So stay tuned and let's get together on this and I'll show you how I rear monarch caterpillars at home. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this invasive. It's exhausting. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's... Before we get into the how-to of taking care of a caterpillar at home, which is going to be really cool, I just want to say two things about rearing caterpillars. One is that some people find it controversial. You can go online and read about the pros and cons uh, and the impact of rearing caterpillars at home in terms of helping the at-risk monarch migration phenomena. I have advocated because it's a great way to learn about metamorphosis, to engage people, to engage in nature emotionally and witness one of the greatest events of nature, complete metamorphosis. And it's pretty exciting to know that these monarchs are going to migrate thousands of miles to Mexico. So I'll just leave it at that. If you want to learn more about the controversy and the pros and cons of rearing monarchs at home, but just having a couple monarchs and rearing them and tagging them is going to be a, a, a great experience for everyone. The second thing you need to be aware of is that sometimes caterpillars that you take care of in captivity will die. It's part of nature. Scientists estimate, I think the going perception is that only 10% of monarch caterpillars in nature make it to become adults. Of those adults, probably only 10% actually ever make it to Mexico. So nature takes its toll. Nature is a tough place. There's probably named six or seven different bacterial, fungal, viral diseases and wasps and other insects that will prey upon them or parasitize caterpillars or chrysalises. And I'll talk a little bit uh, about those. There is so much to learn about these butterflies. I could probably teach a year-long course and just talk about the monarchs and show you and teach you so many things about life and nature just with the monarchs alone. So you need to be aware that while you're taking care of this monarch and caring about it, trying to meet all its need, there may be some things that are a bit out of your control. There's some precautions we can take to reduce it. And again, there's lots of videos and information online about monarchs and if you want to pursue that check that out and i'm sure over the years during my videos i'll keep adding more to my knowledge but check out some of the other people too i really advocate learning being proactive digging into research reading other things don't just watch my show so, right. so i've been rearing monarchs for probably oh gosh probably 20 years when i was a public school high school biology teacher i actually got a grant to do some special things and we had built a indoor monarch breeding and flight cage with six full spectrum lights uh, on a light cycle to stimulate the butterflies and think that they were you know still outside in full summer and we had females breeding in class and part of that grant i got the chance to fly to kansas and go to the Monarch Watch laboratories and see how they rear monarchs there and meet with Dr. Chip Taylor. So it was a really great opportunity. When you bring your caterpillar home, you need to put them somewhere. 
and of course they need to feed on milkweed. And what kind of containers can you use to do it? Primary thing is you want to keep them out of direct sunlight because inside a container, direct sunlight, it can heat up so fast and kill your caterpillar right off the bat. The second thing you want to do is be sure that it's well ventilated. So one of the simplest things to do is to get one of these little terrariums and you can find them at pet shops or or online and I'm not advocating any particular brand and I don't get any money back if you buy one but this is an easy way to do it and you can see that I put a paper towel inside so that it's easy to clean because one other thing you need to do is you need to clean your cages every day <laughs> these guys eat a lot and if they eat a lot they poop a lot so by putting a piece of paper towel in there, that's a really good way to do it and put some milkweed leaves in there. Here's a, a, another one I have. It's a little bit larger. And in this one, I put a whole stem. And you can see probably that this caterpillar has already been really at it and ate up a, a, a lot of those leaves. And again, I put a paper towel on the bottom to help keep it up with. This is a, an old carton of nails, 25 pound box, I think. I got some one by two boards from the local lumber place, some screening and stapled some screen onto the top, this thing right here. And now I've got a large, well ventilated container to keep my butterflies. And here again is another way to take care of monarchs. This is a large plastic storage bin and I took off the top and I made a new top. And I made the top again by one by twos, which you can get really cheaply at a local lumber supply. I used four screws to fasten them together. I measured it so it fit right over the top and I stapled a screen to it. So you can see that this is an easy way to keep a, a large number of caterpillars. And I got a bunch in here and you can see all that caterpillar poop, yes. That is caterpillar poop. That's what it looks like. And if you keep monarchs, you're going to see a lot of that. So in a couple hours, I'm going to change this cage, put fresh milkweed leaves in it, put my top back on, keep them safe, uh, keep it in a spot that I know the sun won't hit it, and we're good to go here. And these are the caterpillars. And it's just amazing how much these caterpillars will eat. It's really fun to watch them. And I had some fun doing some close-up photography of monarch caterpillars eating. And it's just amazing to see them. And look, let me pick up this leaf right here. <laughs> look how they have decimated that. So one of the things you need to do is have a good supply of milkweed. Hopefully you know where to find milkweed near your house and you can go out and collect some. And my last system is kind of the five-star monarch butterfly rearing container. This is actually very simple to make and I'm going to do a, a video next week on how to make this particular container. And again, it's pretty easy. Top and the bottom are made by uh, using a 1 by 12 shelving board cut at the same length as the width of that. So it's just two cuts. It's four pieces of 1 by 2 also just, you know, couple cuts there and then I took my window screening stapled it on and the really cute part of this is that I got a roll of velcro and hooks and loops so I can put caterpillars in and out and change my container and then just quick zip it up just like that and I've got them safe inside and uh, safe for them and protection from any potential wasp or fly predators. So in this one, I put a whole stem in. And the stem is in a jar, and I put the water in the jar and put a piece of aluminum foil over it because I had learned from bad experience that these caterpillars don't swim real well. They fall off the plant and fall into that water. They're done. So this keeps the, the plants really, really uh, healthy. 
And one last chamber, which is actually my favorite, and I forgot to show you because I don't have monarchs in here now. What I've got is tussock moth caterpillars. So I made this with a classic jar, a large jar of peanuts, and I carefully cut off the top here and used a glue gun to glue the window screen into the bottom. You have to be careful and the glue's hot and can burn you. And you have to kind of press things in there and make sure they get a good seal. And then I also cut out the front of this. And so I got really good ventilation. Um, I'll show you a couple pictures of these guys and show you what the tussock moth larva looks like. This will be part of another episode on the various things that you can find on milkweed besides monarch caterpillars. You can find aphids and milkweed bugs and milkweed beetles and tussock moths, caterpillars, as well as aphids, a whole slew of things. So you got a lot of choices here, a lot of different ways. You, can... you got a lot of choices here, a lot of different ways to rear them, a lot of different containers, a lot of different ways to go about it. Is one way better than another? I'm not really sure, but choose which works best for you. Choose the way that makes the uh, best fit for you and your family or at your house. Again, I'm not the only resource here. Look stuff up on the internet. I want you to be active. I always want you to research things and look for things. So see what you can work out that way. Your next problem you need to solve is the milkweed supply. Do you have enough milkweed for the caterpillars you have? So the first thing is don't take more caterpillars than you can handle based on the amount of milkweed that's available. These caterpillars will eat a lot of milkweed. So you either need to have some fresh milkweed that's close by, and I'm fortunate I can do that. I can just go walk down the country road and I got milkweed growing on the roadside and I can collect enough leaves each day to feed my caterpillars. So there's several things you can do to keep your milkweed fresh so that you can make just a couple trips to your location where you got the milkweed. And one way to do it is to cut the milkweed from the field and put it in a bucket of water. But it's important when you do that after you take them home. And be sure if you watched my original first video, I talked about how tough the fibers are in a milkweed plant and how these fibers are actually used to make rope and make cloth. What you need to be sure to do is cut this with a pair of scissors when you're in the field. But when you cut it in the field, you'll see this white sap will come out. And by the time you get home, that white sap will have hardened. So if you put that plant in water like that, it probably won't be able to pull the water up the stem to the leaves and keep them fresh. And you'll look at your milkweed plant and you'll think, wow, geez, why is it like wilting right in front of me? So take this stem and in a bowl of water, cut this underneath the water, give it a few shakes, and then put it in your container. And do the same thing if you have a, a flight cage and you have a, a jar with water in it. If your milkweed is far from your house and, it, and it's a vent to go get it, you can go collect milkweed eggs. And what I recommend is taking a dampened paper towel and a gallon size plastic bag and put the paper towel, spread it out in that plastic bag. Take your milkweed leaves and put them in that bag. Zip up the top and put your bag in the refrigerator. And there you go. So another thing people do is they'll wrap a piece of wet paper towel and aluminum foil around the base of a clipped leaf so that the leaf will continue to have water. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So another thing I've seen online is people using this technique to keep their milkweed leaves fresh longer. And what they do is they take a piece of paper towel like this wet it in water, and then they take the stem of a milkweed leaf and wrap that paper towel around it that's wet. And then they take some aluminum foil and wrap the aluminum foil around the base of the leaf. And you can do this with a number of leaves. The theory is that will keep this leaf fresher longer. So this is something you might want to try. So again, you take a 
piece of paper towel, moisten it in water, uh, wrap it around the stem of your leaf, get some aluminum foil, wrap that around the paper towel. That's to keep the water from evaporating from the paper towel. And you can put this. So one of the jobs you're gonna have to do when you have monarch caterpillars is to put them on fresh milkweed. You can see that this leaf here is getting old and we've got a caterpillar right here. One way to do it is, and I never like touching them with my fingers, that's not a good thing. And you should always wash your hands too before you touch any of the milkweed or the caterpillars because it's even possible to pick up anti-tick, uh, anti-flea medication from a dog or cat and put it on a leaf and that could affect the health of the caterpillar. So here's a caterpillar and so what I took is a is what I do is I take a paintbrush and I gently take him and brush him off the leaf. And you can see that a lot of times these caterpillars have a safety line just in case they fall off the leaf. And so sometimes with your brush you have to remove that safety line. So we're going to take him and set him down on this leaf and there he is, and he is ready to go and keep eating leaves. So I have a caterpillar here that I need to transfer to a fresh leaf. I don't like touching them with my fingers because I'm afraid I'm gonna squeeze them and not have the right amount of touch. So one of the ways to do this is, well, he's on this little stem, so what I can do is I can just cut him off right there. Boom. There I got caterpillar on a leaf like that, and I can put him inside. And with a larger caterpillar like this, I could cut off that piece of leaf and let him drop there, or I can just gently tease him off again with the brush here, like this. And you can see that he clings a lot more strongly than the other caterpillars. I caught him in the middle of eating. And so there we got another one transferred. And this one looks like it's about ready to pupate. He is really big. Look how big that guy is. Wow. So I'll put him back in his container and continue to let him feed. So nature at your door. Wow. There's so much I want to share with you. I only did half what I thought I could do in today's episode. And it's already taken up too much time. So my next episode, I'm going to talk about Monarch Instars. These guys go through five molts. I'll talk about molting. I'll talk about why they call them Instars. I'll talk about what you can look for and how to tell if they're an Instar or not. And I'll also talk more specifically about the potential of the very different diseases they can have. And I'll briefly introduce each disease for you. I hope I gave you enough to go on. I hope you're able to find Monarch Caterpillars. And if you don't, you know that you can order some from... Monarch Watch, but the best, best thing to do is see if you can find caterpillars locally and use local caterpillars, rear those caterpillars. Best if you have a porch or a stoop or somewhere you can rear them outside, but also be protected from sun and predators. And lastly, if you're rearing monarchs and you're tagging monarchs, make sure you get one of these. I just got this in the mail now. This is my Monarch Watch tagging kit. I don't get any money for this. I'm not an affiliate. I don't get kickbacks. It's just a great way to participate in this nationwide research project. And like I said, you can take one of your monarchs, put one of their tags on there, let that thing go, and maybe yours will reach Mexico, and maybe yours will be seen, and someone will record your number, and you'll hear back from that. So if you haven't done it already, be sure to... Uh, get your Monarch Watch tagging kit for Monarch Watch. Watch my next episode. And if you like what I'm doing, subscribe. It really helps me spread the word and encourage people. Like and leave me comments. If you're raising caterpillars, let me know. Comment below. I want to hear from you. Very shortly, I'm going to have a website up. And when you watch this video, it might already be up. I'll have an Instagram. I'll have a uh, business Facebook where you can share your pictures. I'm really looking forward to getting that up and going because I would love to see you and your animals and plants and see what you find and share back with me. That would be so cool. And share with our community of learners. So good luck with your monarchs. I hope I gave you enough to get started. 
check things out, work it out for yourself, research, fact check me, look up stuff on the internet, and learn, learn, learn. See you next time.